With the amount of bread I've been baking recently, I kind of feel like I should change my name from No Egg Craig to All the Bread Craig because I started off this schmore and schmeen with making a white bread which is very good and i can put that in the description or the i cards whichever way it is up here uh, i also made a cornbread recently which was super super simple it was really good uh, and now i've made a whole wheat bread recipe oh i also made banana bread just all the breads uh, but now i'm going to share with you guys uh, my favorite recipe that i tried recently i've made it like three times so far the last time was the best so i'm hoping this time will do, be pretty good too but this recipe is by the minimalist baker who never steers me wrong although recently she has added some non-vegan recipes, so be wary if you're new to being vegan and you wanna try some vegan recipes. Uh, all of her recipes are not vegan, but a lot of them are. Anyway, enough rambling. Uh, first step, since I'm doubling this batch, is three cups of warm water. So the normal batch calls for, uh, or not calls for, it makes one loaf of bread, but I am making two loaves. And usually it calls for the normal amount of yeast, which is one packet or two and a quarter teaspoons. Uh, but in this case, since I'm doing double, I'm doing one and a half tablespoons. And it looks like I'm gonna have to open up a new yeast package as well. Kara and I had to get this yeast online because we couldn't find any near us in any stores because everyone apparently is baking bread. And this was like a rock when I, oh, well, this is so, Weird. I should have showed you guys before, but it was like so packed in there. It was just like a rock. Like it felt like it was so tough and hard. But as you can see, it's just like loose yeast in here. Um, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. But it's like it's a squishy, squishy bag type thing now. But I had like just barely not enough yeast, which is kind of frustrating. Uh, but yeah, like I said, Kara and I had to buy this online. I think it was like 15 bucks for something like this, which I guess usually it'd probably be like six dollars maybe <laughs> for the amount of yeast that we got. Um, although this is a lot of yeast though, so we should be good for the rest of a schmorenschmeen, hopefully, as long as it doesn't keep going. So I'm just going to mix this around. I don't know if this is really a step because although I have been baking bread a lot recently, I'm still new to it. So I don't know if you have to do that. So that's what I do. All right, next ingredient is agave, maple syrup, whatever you wanna do. The normal recipe calls for two tablespoons, but if you're doing a double, that equals four well, yeah, obviously four tablespoons, but a quarter cup. So I'm just doing a quarter cup because there are four tablespoons to a quarter cup. One tablespoon of salt and let's see. Oh yeah, I definitely have enough for this. I wasn't sure because this is kind of empty and that would kind of be annoying if I'm running out of everything in one recipe. And now I'm just adding in two tablespoons of ground flax. Last time when I mentioned adding ground flax, I think that was my last recipe too. Um, or no, those are my banana bread recipe. I'm mixing all my bread recipes up. Uh, but I said flax and I did not mention that it was ground. So this time I'll mention it's ground. Before I add the flour in, I'm just gonna mix this all around. I don't really think it's necessary. I just like to mix stuff. So while the theme today seems to be running out of things, I'm also gonna be running out of this flour. But don't worry, I have more whole wheat flour. I need to put this in like a bigger container that I can scoop out of. Because this is, usually I would scoop out of a bag, but it just, it's so shallow, you can't really scoop this. There's like maybe one and a half of their cups. Number two. And number three, that's basically three. I'm sure all the bakers have just left the chat. And one final cup of whole wheat flour. And now I can do it the way that I know you're supposed to do it. Because I know when I, when I did a live stream of me making banana bread, when I was sifting the flour, and you know, I just like shaking it to go to the top off and not using the knife, everyone was freaking out. Uh, so that's, I finally did it the proper way. And before I add in the white flour, I'm just gonna stir this around. So this is what I was talking about when I was saying I need one of these. We should get another one of these for whole wheat flour. We do have one obviously for white flour. Uh, so what's going in here is three and a half cups of white flour. So this is one and a half cups right now. And as I put it in like one or two cups, I generally like to keep stirring it around. If you haven't noticed, that's my theme. Stirring, mixing two and a half cups. And again, gonna stir. And last cup of white flour, although I'm probably going to have to sprinkle this countertop while I'm eating it anyway. So you're gonna be adding more flour anyway. So what I've found when it gets to this point, when it's like kind of harder to mix in all of the different flours, because it's getting like pretty dry at this point. I've found that like it's, it's kind of easier to just rip a hole in this almost and then pull it out because the inside part is still like wet, I guess you could say, or still like doughy. So I'll just like kind of scoop in. I don't know if this is really a thing. It's just something I made up. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, just like kind of scooping out the inside part that is still doughy because the outside part is full of flour on the outside. 
Did I mention it was on the outside? Because it's on the outside. Okay, now I'm just going to uh, flower this here surface, get flour all over the place, and uh, yeah, we'll just start mixing the flour in slash kneading it. And get all that floury goodness off of, or the doughy goodness, I should, there's still flour in here, but dough too. I know what I'm doing and what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't ramble. That's not what the, my channel's about. I would never do that. Yeah, this is super, super soft. Oh my God, this needs so much more flour. But it, it is easier to mix it with your hands than it is with a spoon. Okay, add a little more white flour, and if I need more flour, I think I'm gonna add some whole wheat flour, actually, because this is a whole wheat bread recipe, and there should be a little bit more whole wheat than white flour. I actually really like the taste of whole wheat better. Um, I really like this recipe even better than the last bread recipe that I made. I think it was my birthday vlog that I did that on. Um, but yeah, this recipe is uh, super good. Highly recommend it. And that other recipe, if you don't have whole wheat flour, just that white flour recipe is really good too. I think the white flour one is easier. So if you want to start with one, I would start with that one and then maybe progress to this one. Although this one's still not really that hard either. Yeah, definitely going to need some more flour. <laughs> Gonna need some more flour. <laughs> so what I learned from the first bread recipe that I tried is when you're kneading it, you're basically just going to do a quarter turn like this pull it in like this, and then just kind of use your body weight to push it down. Do another quarter turn, or like 90 degrees, I guess you'd think of it. Pull it, like fold it over, and then push it down. And I definitely need a bit more flour. Don't get everywhere, don't get everywhere, don't get everywhere. This is definitely the most efficient way to flour your dough. Carry it precariously over the floor. When I actually make this recipe and I'm not shooting a video, I don't do it on this little surface. I do it on this huge surface uh, that my sister and I just made because we used to have a microwave there and we rearranged the kitchen. And it's so nice that it's such a huge surface, especially when you're doing stuff like this, like kneading bread, or if you are chopping up a bunch of vegetables for a stir fry or something. You know you're an adult when you get really excited about a bunch of surface area in a kitchen. <laughs> and once I get to the kneading part where I'm not adding flour because it just needs flour and I'm just kneading, uh, then I usually try to knead my bread for about 10 minutes. So nothing crazy. Okay, now this is what the bread looks like. A lot more like dough. Uh, and you can kind of see the brown little flecks in here. I think it's just from the whole wheat flour because uh, I did definitely not have that with the white bread recipe. So now what I'm going to do is just spray this and I'm going to plop this in here and then after you plop it i'm going to turn it just so that all of it gets covered and this recipe just says let rest or let rise at room temperature just cover it let it rise at room temperature sprayed with a little bit of oil uh, so that's what i'm going to do the last recipe that i did it said to let it rise in a very warm place so what i would do for that one is i would get a pot of boiling water put it in the oven and then put the bread uncovered on top of it. Uh, but this one just says rest at room temperature. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, it's been two hours and I am all sweaty. You need to go take a shower because I worked out while I was waiting for my bread to rise. And wow, look at that. Look how much it rose. Uh, so now actually what you have to do now that I just threw this towel over here, I'm going to just put the towel back on here. And actually for the first time in any bread recipe I've ever seen, uh, it said that you are supposed to actually let the bread rise in the refrigerator, which I think is interesting. Oh, before I do that, I just wanna show you guys what's in the refrigerator, because Kara and I just made a chickpea pot pie last night by Nora Cooks, if you want to check that out. There's uh, biscuits on the top, which is super, super good. I took some pictures last night that'll probably do it a little bit more justice, so uh, let's zoom out. Um, <laughs> so definitely go check that recipe out. I can put that in the description. But right now, we're just putting this in here for another two hours. And it said in the recipe that this is optional, so if you don't have the time, then just do two hours at room temperature. But this will guarantee you better results, hopefully. So I said, anyway, I'm going by what she says. She knows more than I do. Okay, bye. It's been another two hours, and remember that is optional, so if you are short on time, you will probably be fine without it, but it has risen even more 
And now I'm going to do something a little bit different than what the recipe says, because what the recipe says is to create a well uh, in here, and then you're going to pour in your sunflower seeds and rolled oats. I have these uh, pepitas, roasted pepitas with salt. I don't have any sunflower seeds, so that's what I use instead. And I also use these uh, old fashioned oats. I actually use a little bit less than what the recipe called for because I only had three tablespoons left of those pepitas. And I was like, all right, well, I'm just gonna do three tablespoons instead of four if I were to double the recipe. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just going to take this out. I should actually flour the surface first. I'm just gonna dump this on here. Put even more flour on the top like this, just until it's not sticky anymore. Cause I can tell just by looking at this, this, this is going to be pretty sticky if I don't add flour to it right now. And it's definitely colder than it was before. I guess that means my refrigerator is on. Okay, I just sort of barely needed it just to get a little bit of more flour in there so it's not sticky while I'm working with this. I'm going to cut this in half with this dough cutter. And I'm gonna get a little bit of flour on like the inside part because I feel like the inside part has the least amount of flour. gonna knead it a tiny bit and then just three turns and I'm just going to take about half of this and I'm just gonna put it on here. I'm just going to knead this into the bread. Like I said, this is something that's not in the recipe. I'm just gonna try it this way because the last time I tried to do it with just like making a well and putting everything in it, uh, I it had a tendency to have a lot of the seeds concentrated in one area and then a lot of the bread didn't have it. So I'm just gonna try and see if this works better, something like this, or maybe I could even I'm just figuring this out as I go and dropping the seeds everywhere. <laughs> um, but uh, all right, so we're just going to knead it in and see how this works. I'm just going to try to pick up as many seeds as I possibly can as I'm kneading this. And I'm okay with it mostly sticking to the outside because I feel like it's, it looks kind of decorative if it's on the outside anyway. It looks kind of cool. I'm just going to roll this around too when there's extra seeds because I have most of the seeds picked up but I'm just going to roll this around and get all the last of them. And then they're really stuck on the outside now, so I'm just going to knead them into it. All right, I feel like this looks pretty cool the way that it is. And I'm going to spray a pan, form this into sort of like a bread-ish type loaf. And anything that is left over, I'm just going to just, I'm sure this is what all the professional bakers do. You just scoop it up and I'm just gonna sprinkle it on top. <laughs> and this is the first loaf. And for the second loaf, I'm gonna be doing the exact same thing, just putting a little bit of flour in here to make sure it doesn't get sticky. And now I'm going to put on the rest of the seeds all over this counter and just roll the seeds onto it. All right, now that I got pretty much all the seeds off of here, I'm just going to put this into this oiled pan, sprinkle a couple more on here. And honestly, I think that I probably put most of the seeds uh, on this one. So I'm going to grab the other loaf and just sprinkle some of the more oats and seeds on top of that. So this is the finished product. They both rose just a little bit more after about an hour. I had saran wrap on them. I took them off. That's all you really missed. This one seems to be a little bit more even than this one, but they're both beautiful in my opinion. As a parent, you can't play favorites. Now is the interesting part because you don't just stick it in the oven like any other bread recipe. I don't know exactly why this is, but I have done this every time and it has turned out great and I'm not about to change it this time. Uh, but for some reason, you have to have a cast iron skillet on the bottom of the oven and you pour in one cup of water and you try not to hurt yourself or anything. And that's that. Hey, you don't know if it like helps with moisture or something like that. Just be safe when you're doing that where your oven mitts because it might splatter a little bit. And the time that you put it in for, it said at least 26 to 35 minutes. I've done 26 minutes before and uh, it came out a little bit doughy, so I'm going to do 33 minutes. Last time it came out great, so I recommend 33, 35 minutes. And that's that. Okay, there's only five minutes left, and I'm so impatient. Like, these have risen so beautifully. You can't really see it because of all the reflection and glare, but just trust me, 
They look beautiful. Five, four, three, two, one. There we go. It's a little bit delayed, but oh well. Um, oh my. Oh, whoa. These look so beautiful. I kind of think that whole wheat bread just looks more beautiful because it's just more brown. Like, I don't know. I just, I find it more aesthetically pleasing, but maybe that's just me. So anyway, this, oh, I should not take my oven mitts off when I grab this bread. <laughs> um, these uh, bread just have to sit in the pan for another five minutes or so. This is what the bottom looks like. Uh, so let's let them sit in the pan for another five minutes and then you'll place them on a cooling rack. And you're supposed to, in the recipe, it calls for slashing the bread like a half inch deep, like three, four slashes. I usually do that. Um, this time I just forgot and it looks like it came out okay. So I'm unfortunately going to have to be the bearer of bad news for this recipe. You're actually going to have to wait for this to cool all the way down before you cut into it. Otherwise it could potentially get doughy. That's exactly what it says on the recipe and I did it. And one time it did turn out to be a little bit doughy and it was fine the night that we cut into it. But if you are going to be consuming it throughout the week, then I definitely recommend waiting to cut into it. If you're going to a family party or you're just particularly hungry, then if you're going to eat it in one sitting or one night, then you'll probably be fine cutting into it while it's still warm. And that's probably when it's going to be best but uh, that's not what I'm doing so I am going to be waiting to cool this down probably till tomorrow you'll see it so I'll see you then the plan was for us to eat the bread tomorrow but Kara said she was too hungry so she just wanted to eat some now well you have two loaves <laughs> why would you just gonna sit here and stare at two loaves of bread on yeah. them well the plan is to bring some in for people to try tomorrow but I figured you know people like videos of bread being cut so I'll just shut up and let the sound of bread being cut. Do you want to keep cutting or? Cut whole thing. Okay. So it's just seeds on the outside? Or um, this should be seasoned oats. Uh, I don't know if they're, in the, yeah, I guess they're not too much mixed on the inside. That's fine. It's, it looks very decorative. Mm hmm Fancy. Mm -hmm. This is some fancy bread. Yeah. Whose recipe is this? Minimalist Baker. So you've made this one before? Yeah. I made it two, I think this is the third. No, this might be the fourth time. Oh, the time that it was doughy, that was the same recipe? Yeah, it was doughy like twice, and I was like, you know what, I'll just cook it longer, and that worked. Mm -hmm. And also, we did not cook into it when it was still warm. Right. When did this come out, Lavin? Uh, four. And it is now nine. Yeah, so it's, I think it's been a long enough time. Oh mm -hmm. man, this is gonna be good for like sandwich bread. Cut extra if you want all that, but for now I'll just leave it. Yeah. Looks Isn't good. It's so appealing. Mm-hmm. Hmm. 24 hours later. Part of the reason that I brought the bread the next day is because, like I said, it needs to cool all the way, but also because I have to be very specific in when I bring food for them, when I'm surprising them, because when they're doing shipping, there's a very specific window of time where they will be available. So that is about 2 p.m. And unless I woke up at like 5 a.m. yesterday, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So let's go in now and surprise them with this loaf of bread. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Is this how you guys thought that you'd be spending your 36th anniversary? I thought there'd be less face masks involved, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see this, that coming. This is all different. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know how, what we envisioned. Yeah. <laughs> but there were no face masks whatsoever involved or um, yeah. isolation or anything of that mm. nature. Oh, it doesn't matter. Mm. What did you think? I didn't think I'd have curly hair. What'd you think about your hair, Steve? Did you think it'd be white? Well, no. And <laughs> not this long either. <laughs> you didn't think you wouldn't be able to get a haircut? <laughs> Surprise! Well, I heard something pop here. And you guys have had, not this specific loaf, but you guys have had this recipe before. And you guys, yeah, because they're buttered. I'll allow it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's our anniversary after all. Yeah. Oh, don't get used to this. It's just anniversary bread. Anniversary butter. Yeah. Uh, so 
I'm sure people saw the face masks in the thumbnail. I mean, you guys aren't wearing them because you guys look together. That's yeah, right, tough masks. guy. Huh. Um, but uh, do you want to explain why you guys are wearing face masks now and why you weren't before? Because we have introduced two more people back into the herd. Because it's just been us seven. You and Kara are already roommates. Steve and I are already roommates. Karen, <laughs> Sam, Max. It's just been us seven since um, St. Patrick's Day. Mm. And at the time we weren't, we didn't have to wear face masks. But now that we brought Joe and Tyler back, and they've been home self isolating, but now that we brought them back, we thought just be on the safe side. We darn well better wear them. So that's what we're doing. Yep. Just protect us, protect him, protect mm -hmm. everybody. Everybody's families and Hopefully whatnot. Hopefully nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. That's our big goal in life. We want yeah. nothing to nothing happen. Nothing to happen. <laughs> Nothing happened for 36 years. <laughs> uh, all right. I'll try it. Okay. I want to tell you guys twice. All right. What? <laughs> <laughs> Just like at our wedding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Mm. He did the cake in the face thing and he promised me he would. Oh, wouldn't. dad. What the hell? Now I'm mad. All over again. Stirring up old feelings, huh? I was very hurt by that. And then I fell down and my shoes fell off. Oh, jeez. Sounds like a whole thing. Kind of was. Yeah, it was awful. The bread, too? Yeah. The bread, on the other hand. Mm. <laughs> Tell me about this crunchy stuff, mm -hmm. son. Uh, smoked, or no, roasted pepitas and rolled oats. Old fashioned oats. This yeah. is great. Yeah. Yeah. I you know think that might be my best load yet. You mm. know what I like about bread? Mm. It's a way to get butter into my mouth. Mm -hmm. It's just a vehicle for butter. butter. <laughs> mm. Excellent. Nice de density. Perfect crumb. Hmm. The crust was to die for. Mm -hmm. you know, speaking of good reviews, other than saying it's good, I should probably get Max to review this too. Huh? Does Max eat? <laughs> he does if it's uh, not sweet. Oh, okay. I don't usually put butter on bread. Okay. Not a butter kind of guy. I mean, I I really like butter. But <laughs> I don't know. I just don't really eat it on bread. Okay. What do you eat it on? Uh, popcorn, grapes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So I was hoping to get a more detailed response out of you because my mm -hmm. parents were like, "It's good." I will my mom give a little bit of a little bit of uh, description. It is really good to start, especially it's like super sandwichy, man. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going for. So I was like, I would like to make peanut butter and jelly with this. <laughs> oh, it would be perfect for PBJ. Yeah. Or toast it and dip it in hummus. Yeah. Dude, that's like super solid. The crumb's nice. So I don't know. Do you proof it or do you just use the, uh, like a bread maker or something? Oh, no. I, it's not by hand. I, I, wow, man. I don't know exactly what proofing means. Though, so. Like when you let it sit and rise? Oh, uh, yeah, it, it rose for two hours at room temperature and then two hours in the uh, refrigerator, which was interesting, and then one more hour out at room temperature before I put it in the oven. Hmm. So, like, five hours total. Hey, man, it came out really nice, though. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how it came out. It is really good. It's hitting, like, all the bread notes where you get, like, the graininess and, and just... Uh, it's hard to describe bread, but yeah. it, it tastes exactly how bread should. Yeah. It's really good. And then I really like it when you get to the seed, too, and you get, like, you know, that little flavor boost and everything. I don't know, man. You're killing it on all the baked goods. I, I, say. I think you missed your calling as a food critic. Well, a very positive food critic. <laughs> if anybody wants to pay me to eat good food, you just let me know. <laughs> This is going to be my first time trying this particular loaf, and I'm going to try it without any butter first. Oh, I was wondering what you were doing there. It is really good. Right? What? <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, It's hard to describe bread, though, right? Mm -hmm. It's very, very bready. Yeah. I. It's definitely not doughy. I would, maybe next time I might even do 35 minutes, because I did 33 minutes uh, this time. Although I don't know if that would make it like drier. I mean, you you were a baker for years. Yeah. Um, I don't think it would make it drier unless you like really cook, cooked it like, you know, mm -hmm. longer, super hot or something. Because so. it's like, I, I don't want to say it's moist because it's not like a quick bread, because it's it, it, not moist, but it's like moist enough. 
cakey it was almost like sorta it's got like if I didn't know better I would think that there was dairy in there oh really yeah especially with the butter <laughs> well yeah, yeah. you're dead earth brown so give that a shout out yeah but like when you when you bite it and you're like it's in your mouth it kind of like clumps together mm -hmm. I guess kind of yeah. nicely I kind of like the I texture I was going to say like that just reminds me of bread so yeah. I'm like yeah I don't know I thought it was super, super bready. Like, mm. it's a terrible descriptor, but... <laughs> wow. I'm honestly just really proud of this. This yeah. came out really well. Like. I know. And bread's not easy to make, man. Yeah, it took like four times before I really got it. But yeah. I think last time I got it pretty well. I didn't do any seeds or anything last time, but I remember to slash it, like, very small different oh, yeah, changes and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it came out really well, so... I'm excited to see other people's reviews. Well, it's very pretty, too. I'm yeah. sure you already showed it. It <laughs> is, it's very nice, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. Sam doesn't like a lot of butter on her bread. Unless it's banana bread. Yeah. And then I gob it on. I'm not a big butter person. <laughs> but I do like it on. Like, I'd eat it plain. Yeah. But. So, I've been wanting this bread for a long time, <laughs> Craig. <laughs> mm. Now, I wouldn't have guessed that it was wheat bread. Really? No. Yeah. Like normally, I can tell a very distinct difference between wheat. So there's wheat and white in here. I don't know. Okay. Is, there, is there usually a combination in wheat bread? I'm not sure. I would say no. Oh, okay. I would say no, but um, and usually wheat bread is a lot darker. Mm. Yours is lighter, but it's delicious. <laughs> the problem with salmon bread is I can eat the whole loaf in yeah. one sitting, <laughs> and carbs and I don't do well. <laughs> But it's very delicious. Yeah. I like that you put the seeds on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you think you could put seeds throughout it too or no? I tried to. I thought that it was. I think there's a little bit of seeds throughout. Not a whole lot though. But I, I did it before where there were seeds almost exclusively on the inside and not on the outside. Uh -huh. But like you make a well and put them in there yeah. and stuff like that. But this time I just rolled it in it. Okay. Kinda. Um, and I, I kind of like that better. But I would, it would also be, I guess, nice to do a well put them in and then yeah. also roll it in so it's kind of more mixed. I'll do that next time. I like it. It's very, it's light. It's not like you'd get really full from it. I don't know once I eat it, you know, <laughs> if it's going to feel like that. Yeah, but it's not like super dense that you would... Right, where like it's just too meat. much. Yeah, yeah. My mother-in-law makes bread and hers is extremely dense. So it's yeah. like you can only eat a one or two piece and then you're like, whoa, yeah. that's a lot of bread. This is perfect. I think you uh, missed your calling. <laughs> mm -hmm. I actually started baking all this bread during quarantine because I was Skyping one of my friends from college and he was like, yeah, I've been baking bread a lot recently. I was like, oh, I haven't been able to find bread at my store, so I should just learn how to make some. Because I always thought that it was like really complicated and just, just like a whole ordeal, uh, but he just made it sound so easy and I was like... I should give it a try. And I was like, wow, it's actually easier than I thought. I mean, like, yeah, like you learn stuff along the way. Some levels will be better than others, but it's just like anything else. Like you just learn from trial and error and actually just doing. Uh, so that's what I hope that you guys can get from these videos. I hope that you guys can realize like, oh, being vegan's not that hard. Baking bread's not that hard. Making a lot of dishes that seem kind of daunting at first are really not that hard. Because if I can do it, then you guys could definitely do it. Uh, so I don't really know what I'm doing. Like I remember, like Max in the video asked me if I proofed my bread myself, and I was like, "Proof my bread? What does that mean?" Like you don't need to know all this stuff in order to to make something to make just make a good loaf of bread that you want to eat. Like you just sort of learn as you go. And anyway, that's that's what I hope you guys get out of this. I hope you guys try this. And if you do, post it on Instagram, tag me, let me see it. Um, and if you're new here. Uh, I've been doing live streams every Friday at 3 p.m. I've been doing cooking live streams so far. I've made a pizza. I've made banana bread. Um, what did I make? Oh, I made mac and cheese, uh, butternut squash mac and cheese last week. And what people have been really, really requesting recently is my energy balls recipe, which is super, super simple. Uh, I have it over here somewhere, but um, I will probably be doing that this Friday. And if I don't do that this Friday, the only other thing that I was thinking of doing was like possibly a workout live stream. So if you've been like, 
knowing that you should work out, but just not having the motivation. I'm hoping that having someone uh, work out live would maybe be motivation in itself, like almost like working out with a friend. So that's that's just something I was thinking about. If you guys are not all about that, because I know I'm not a fitness YouTube channel, I'm a, like a, mostly a cooking YouTube channel. So I could do energy balls, I could maybe do a workout, uh, whatever you guys would want to do. If I were to do a workout type video, it would be something with really no equipment, or if any equipment, maybe like a backpack filled with books or a towel or like something that you have around the house because I know like I have some dumbbells, I have some bands and stuff, but I know not everybody does. So I would wanna do something that everyone can do. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys wanna see energy balls or would you wanna see a workout? Uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe, check out my Instagram, my other videos, all that kind of stuff, and I will see you guys later.